that data is turning from a cost center into a profit center. They had to keep it before for regulatory purposes, but now they can actually make use of it. And then when they come to try and make use of it, they realize that, wait, they can't because it's all on legacy NAS. Hello, and welcome to Vast Forward, a new video series from Vast Data. In these series, we're gonna talk about some of the greatest challenges and opportunities facing storage administrators and IT departments across the data center. My name's Daniel Bounds. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Vast Data. And for this first video, I have the great privilege of being joined by Renan Halleck. Renan's the founder uh, and CEO of Vast Data, longtime industry veteran. Welcome, Renan. Thank you. I'd like to take a minute and just talk about what is Vast. I know that um, as a company, we've been around a couple of years now. We've got some incredible customers and a lot of traction that we'll talk about. But uh, you know, kind of what's what's the the quick tour on who, what is Vast Data? Sure. So we're a next generation infrastructure company aimed at redoing infrastructure. Uh, we started with a storage uh, mission of giving customers fast access to all of their information. And by doing that, eliminating the need for storage tiering, hard drives, legacy NAS uh, in the way that it was before Vast came into the scene. And we're mainly working with customers on next generation projects around AI and machine learning and deep learning and enabling those new applications through a new system. Conditions have changed over the last 20 years. There are a number of things that, that we've seen. Uh, the one that we talk about all the time is data explosion. But what's interesting is there are other aspects that have continued to develop. Um, in some ways, the hard drive continues to regress. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, the network has materially changed. Yes. Talk a little bit about how that impacts the architecture. So the first thing that led us here is the actual problem, the fact that the old stuff isn't working anymore. Data has changed in a way that we now need fast access to very large data sets and very large um, pieces of data, whether it's images or video, that computers can now analyze and gain insight from. And at the same time, we've seen the underlying technologies shift to a place where we can build a new type of architecture on top of them. Those technologies include uh, NVMe over fabrics, which allows us to access remote SSDs as if they were direct attached. It includes storage class memory, which is a persistent form of very fast memory that can be used as a write buffer and as a metadata store on the other side of the network. Uh, things like containers that allows us to scale uh, pretty much in an infinite manner um, and have stateless containers with all of the state on the other side of this NVMe fabric. These are things that did not exist when we started and we could not have developed disaggregated shared everything without them. Well, I think that's a really critical point here because we're talking about a, a sea change of uh, next generation applications ushered in by this idea of machine intelligence. Um, the, the having to harness that in context of the, the data growth really creates a, a, an inflection point. Uh, and, and so is that inflection point something that was in your mind as you started to architect days, uh, the disaggregated shared everything, uh, and, and talk a little bit about how customers should, should shift their thinking in the way that they treat their data and consider their data uh, in this share everything architecture. Yeah, it all starts with customers and their requirements. And what they've been seeing over the last few years is that data is turning from a cost center into a profit center. They had to keep it before for regulatory purposes, but now they can actually make use of it. And then when they come to try and make use of it, they realize that, wait, they can't because it's all on legacy NAS. And so it's not really accessible. What they really want is a single system that is faster than what they had before as the fastest and as affordable as what they had before as the most affordable. Well, and it sounds like with, without completely blowing up the architectures of the past, you really can't get to the future. 
That's true. The architectures of the past are riddled with trade-offs, which are inherent to the way that they were built. And in order to break those trade-offs, you need to start from a clean sheet of paper. So globally speaking, it's a radically new architecture. Um, it's, it's helping customers solve problems in ways that they, they couldn't before. Uh, but let's, let's sort of double click just a little bit and, and really focus on if I am a, if I'm a NAS customer today, what are the challenges that I'm facing and how did that inform the decisions that, that you and the, the team have made as the product has developed? So Legacy NAS has been with us for a while. Uh, it started way back when with the dual controller architecture, which was not scalable. And then about 20 years ago, uh, shared nothing came to be a great idea that allowed systems to scale beyond one or two controllers. What we've realized over the last four or five years is that shared nothing has reached the end of its rope. Um, you can't scale it beyond a certain amount. And as you do, you begin to get diminishing returns in terms of performance and resilience. And what we realized is that a new architecture is required in order to solve those fundamental problems. So going back to, to share nothing infrastructures and the way that, that clusters are built, how has VAST created a, a solution and maybe even contrast that with what storage administrators have to do today? Sure. Uh, the fact that today's systems require you to choose between uh, large scale and large performance and the fact that you can't really grow them to the size that you need requires storage administrators today to have a lot of silos, a lot of different pools of storage and to move data between those pools. And what the disaggregated shared everything approach allows us to do is now we've isolated the performance bottleneck into the CPU and we've completely decoupled growth in CPU from growth in capacity. What about cost? So, so we, we, we always think of cost in terms of the acquisition cost, the licensing cost, uh, but, but obviously there, there's more to it. Um, comment, if you will, about how universal storage helps drive a lower total cost of ownership over the life of a product. Yeah, so you can't really say it's universal unless it's affordable. Um, and a big part of our challenge in the early days was how do we take these relatively expensive parts like fast networks and fast SSDs and turn them into an affordable system. And what we realized was that this new architecture, DAYS, affords us economies of scale. And every node, every container can now see the entirety of the namespace as if it was direct attached. And that allows us to squeeze efficiencies out of these devices. For example, the way that we do uh, data protection is entirely different than the way anyone else does it and provides much lower levels of overhead while providing much more resilience at a faster speed of doing rebuilds. The way that we do data reduction is much more aggressive than anything else that came before. In fact, we many times get fed data that has already been compressed and already been deduplicated, and we can still reduce that down significantly because of the way that we look for similarity across the namespace. I think for a lot of customers, the other thing that's in their mind is they consider vast data in universal storage is this idea of it's a pretty big thing for, for large organizations to make large investments. They're used to doing deployments and maintenances and refreshes a very specific way. What do you say to them as they think about risk uh, and as they think about having to re-architect some of their operations to incorporate this new architecture? Yes, so these customers hate the current status quo. They would much rather stop thinking about infrastructure and stop needing to manage it and stop worrying about when it will be available and when it won't be available. And that's what we bring to the table. Thanks, Renan. A great, great conversation today. And thank all of you for joining. Please stay tuned. We're going to have more videos coming your way with more topics and more experts. But until then, take care and we'll see you soon. 